Winnie was right. He is the fastest horse you have ever ridden. A little more than an hour, you have covered 60 miles. Okay. Damn! Uh, okay, I have no idea how much that is. I'm using the whole kilometer thing, but... Uh, Give me a yeah, moment, I, I'll t I have a calculator right here, I'll tell you. That's right, Rana. We use kilometers around here like civilized people. I just 96 find it kilometers an hour. <sighs> Holy mother of... Okay, that's pretty damn fast. I think it's sort of the equivalent of a very good car, but I don't know. Yeah, that is like a car, the speed of a car. Well, I know a car has very speeds, but it's around what you can drive on the big roads around here. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's only when you find yourself approaching a stone bridge commanded by a huge gated archway that you are forced to rein him to a halt. Above the archway, you notice the words Denka Gate engraved into the stone. Below them, written in chalk, is the message Toll for Gold Crowns. After a few minutes, an unshaven old man emerged from the door, set into the grand gate. He holds out his hand and demands that you pay him the toll. Uh, will you pay him four gold crowns? Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. Okay, the dark four gold crowns. You leap behind the Denka gate and follow a road that twists and climbs through densely wooded highland. Once you crisp the last timbered hill, you begin a gradual descent towards the Taunoa Valley, a fertile expanse of cropland and grassy plain. By dusk, you can see the river Quall ahead, and shortly before nightfall, you cross its fast-flowing waters at a bridge in the center of Quarden, a busy town on the Karen route to Cassillon. Just beyond the bridge, you see an impressive hostelry with adjoining stables. A shield hangs above the courtyard gate, displaying its name, the Barrel Bridge Tavern. Do you wish to stay here in the hostelry? Sure, why not? Yeah. Let's do Might as well. As you enter the courtyard, a boy rushes out of the stables and eagerly takes charge of Wild, wild Wind's reins. He praises your horse enthusiastically and promises that he will look after him well while you enjoy your visit to the tavern. On entering the tap room, you are welcomed by the mouth-watering smell of roasting beef and fine ale. The tavern is busy and nobody pays you any special attention as you take a seat by the counter. At a nearby table, you notice an argument is brewing between a merchant and a man dressed in a shabby hide coat. The merchant is accusing the man of stealing a purse of gems from his pocket, and the confrontation is being made worse by a third man, a lank-haired bargee, who is siding with the merchant. The accused man pleads that he is innocent, but the other two give no credence to his pleas. Suddenly, the merchant draws a dagger and threatens to slit the man's throat unless he hands over the stolen gems at once. I say we go help. Do you wish to use telekinosis? Uh, yep. sure. Yeah, why not? You advance Kai's master who reveals to you the whereabouts of the missing purse of gems. It is in the boot of the Banji, the lank-haired man who is siding with the merchant against the other. He is hoping to keep hidden his skill by pointing the finger of suspicion at the man in the hide coat. The Banji steps away from the table and, as he tries to move quietly towards the tavern door, he passes in front of your chair. Deftly, you kick the top of his boots. The blow splits the purse and scatters gemstone all over the tavern floor. Busted. Why you goes the guilty bunchy, and in the blink of an eye he draws his dagger and lunges for your hearts. Really? That's a picture of the guy. I don't How think dare he... you prevent me from stealing <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he knows who he is. There! There's your threatening adversary of the day. You <laughs> No 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 not that guy, but it might be his less uh, law abiding twin brother. Oh, I thought it might be Link. Is Pyrrhus and Lincoln uh, related to each other? I Might wonder. Be. Huh. But yeah, this is the third uh, member of the family they really don't like talking about. Really? He's pointing that thing at us? Yep. At this point, we have more agility and stamina than Altia and Ezio combined. Right. You're now finding Baji, the master thief. <laughs> Not really! <laughs> well, okay, that's what it says. Give me a roll of a die. Okay. Nine. And through the air flies the head of Baji, the master thief. You won. Huh. I hope to at least teach him a lesson, but if his head needs to go, then it goes. Yeah. The accused man thanks you profusely, profusely for pr proving his innocence, and the merchant, while on his hand and knees scattering up his scattered gems, offers the man one of his glittering stones by way of an apology. Well, that's nice of him. Damn right. 
Bread faced with embarrassment, the merchants then offers you 10 gold crowns for having raised him up the thief whom he was about to entrust with his entire cargo of gems and spices from Cassiorn. Well, let me see. Our current currency is. Uh, now nah, we have uh, 41 out of 50. So if he just gives us 9 coins and uses the last, well, yeah. Um. I just want to point something out here. That thief was dumb as shit. Yep. If he had just waited till he had gotten the entire carriage, then nobody would ever have known he made off with it. Yeah, I but have got, re revoked yeah, but your greedy. title as my master thief. Yeah, but so, he got greedy and tried to pickpocket the guy who was... <laughs> guy, guy before, before he could make off with the big loot. Yeah, yep. as, as I said, bloody stupid. I yep. revoke your title of Master Thief. You don't deserve it. Yep. Come back when you have learned some skill and yeah. some sense. I mean, he's a pretty average thief. Yep. You know the average thief is. You know the average thief, right? And then, a dumbass who thinks he's way more skilled than he actually is. Uh, well, to be fair, the only reason you could, uh, he was discovered was because your supernatural powers. Actually, I thought I already thought it was. Pretty. <laughs> I was already a bit suspicious that he was accusing the other guy of it. Of it. I mean, what was? And that. I mean, what was it? Was his <laughs> proof? Why was he involved in it at all? Yeah. But also, at least when, also when Yasmin started he tried to run away. Why? Yeah. But at least can't we agree that it was nice of the merchant to at least pay the guy he was accusing of one of his gems as apology? Oh yeah. yeah sorry, absolutely. my bad. Hmm. Here. Yeah. I, I guess they don't have the. I, don't, I guess they don't have apology beers there. <laughs> well, I assume he can buy a beer for that thing if he wishes to. The tavern owner, however, is not so understanding. He does not like blood being spilled on his premise, and he asks you to leave at once. You bid all three good night and then return to the stables to collect Wild Wind. Yeah, I apologize, Mr. Barkeeper. I think I got ahead of myself. But um, dish. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You'll be here all week. Not, not like there's something better to do. <laughs> thank you. A signpost on the road out of Quarland says Cassion 260 miles. On a normal horse, you would expect the journey to take four days, but on Wild Wind, you are confident of reaching the city of merchants before midnight. Aided by a full moon and your sharp car skills, you keep Wild Wind on a safe course throughout your long night's ride. Rapidly, the miles melt away beneath his hooves, and as midnight approaches, you see the welcoming lights of Cassiorn twinkling on the horizon. Using magical spy glasses, the watchful guards above the city west gate see you coming, and set the torches to fire beacons to help guide you. The gates of the city are thrown open, and as you ride through, you meet with a thunderous welcome from its citizens, rich and poor, many of whom have left their beds to cheer your arrival. Not until you see the bulbous golden towers of the High Mage's Palace do you allow Wildwind to slow his pace. You pass through the palace's grand arch, crafted from marble and gold, and as you bring Wildwind to a halt, you see a wondrous skyship hovering over the roof of the High Mage's chambers. It reminds you of Skyrider, your friend Guildmaster Bainton's flying ship, although the craft above is sleeker and appears to be fashioned not from wood, but from burnished metal. Hmm. She awaits your command, says High Major Cordes as he strides down the steps of his palace chambers. With an entourage of guards and devices scurrying in his wake. What do you think? He beams, pointing to the ship. Is she not magnificent? Well, you guys get to judge that for yourself, because it's picture time. Let's have a look at what they constructed. Nice. Wow. Nice? Yeah, nice. I like it. Huh. Yeah, it's a bit... Ma magnificent. It's a yeah. bit sleek, but yeah, it, it looks cool, but uh, let me see. also has a lot of sails, I think, but we can only really test it once we get up in the skies. Mm. Yes, indeed she is, you reply, as you dismount from Wild Wind, who, to your greater astonishment, displays not the slightest sign of fatigue after your incredible ride from Moretta. Okay, Her seriously, I need to say, some juvenile part of me just imagined this super horse or something, some kind of jet engine behind <laughs> it, so it can basically run so fast. Look at yeah, my horse. My what? horse is amazing. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering why we don't just ride all the way on Whirlwind, but the ship might be a bit faster, I don't know. Well, it can also travel in a straight line over many obstacles that Wildwind would still have to go around. Oh, yeah. Plus, something might get in the way on land. 
Well, something might get in the way on the sky too, but the odds of that are smaller. Pray tell me. I've just written down Wild Wind is the fastest horse in the world. Hmm. Pray tell me, High Major, what is the craft's name? We call her Cloud Dancer, he replies proudly. Wasn't that a pony from My Little Pony named that? Nine! You sure? What? I only heard Waller screaming, but yeah. I'm not you sure. You also forgot his English for that particular answer. I well, can Nice! Oh. oh! Oh! Sorry. But I'm pretty that. sure there was a, a pony man named Cloud Dance, in the at least in the first episode, but I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, within the hour, you're standing aboard the gleaming steel deck of Cloud Dancer, which vibrates gently in tune to the ringing, rising power of its magical engines. The crew of Cassionian engines, engineers set free the horses, which hold her in place, and then, with a farewell wave to Cordus and his court, you give the order for Cloud Dancer to commence her maiden voyage north to Holmgard. So, From you, you can actually ask yourself if we uh, bring our horse, but I think, regardless of how, well, Supreme, such an animal is. I think it will basically freak the fuck out and start stampeding. Mm. Throughout your sky voyage home, your mind is filled with the fear and uncertainty of what may await you in Holmgard. You spend most of the journey on the rear deck, alone with your thoughts, staring down at the land speeding past more than a mile below. You watch as the jungle of the Mokenmire Swamp gives way to the barren scrubs of the wildlands. Then, when you catch sight of the pass of Moitura, Sorry, your pulse races with excitement for this V-shaped cleft in the southern dawn cracks is where the wildland territories end and your beloved homeland of Summerlund begins. Yet the excitement you feel here is but nothing compared to your elation when you first glimpse the lights of Holmgard, the Summerlanding capital. Guided by beacons blazing atop the King's Citadel, the crew of the Cloud Dancer brings it gently in towards the city. The craft is made to hover directly above the Citadel and horses are lowered to anchor her in position against the wind. Then you descend by rope ladder to the Citadel roof where you are greeted by a distinguished party of barons and friars led by King Ulnar himself. Welcome home, Grand Master, he says, his voice breaking with emotion. Then he clasps you to his chest like a father welcoming home a lost son. Thank Kai and Isha you are safe, Lone Wolf, he says. Now may the darkness of Nor be lifted from our land. King Ulnar convenes an emergency council of the Samlinding barons in his chamber of state. When all are assembled, Baron Calder of Anskaven conducts a briefing Principality of For Your Benefit, outlining the grave situation confronting Summerland and, most especially, the new order of the Kai. You are aware of much of what he says, having been briefed already by Gwydion, the Sage, and Vareta, but you learn that the Summerlanding army has lost many brave men attempting to break the siege of the Kai Monastery, and is too weakened at present to attack the enemy again. Where is Guildmaster Bain done? you ask, when called upon by the King to speak of the to the Council of War. He is at the Kai Monastery, answers Baron Meta of Tyser. He, in company with Lord Remo of Desi and the ten most senior magicians of Torrance Brotherhood, went to the monastery during the early days of the siege. The traveler there bought the Guildmaster Skyship, and at this point the Baron hesitates and looks to the King as if seeking his permission to continue. The King continues on his behalf. Grandmaster, he says, his voice heavy, the Guildmaster Skyship was seen falling from the skies above the monastery. Border Ranger saw it crash in flames. We, we fear that all aboard were lost. The king's words comes as a terrible blow for Bane Dunn and Remoa are your closest friend. If it's true, and all of some of those finest magicians have been lost at a stroke, then the blow is doubly severe. The security of your homeland will have been greatly compromised by their death. Do you wish to use telekinosis? Yeah. yeah. You request the king to excuse you from the council of war for a few moments. He grants your request, thinking that you wish to be alone to grieve the loss of your friends, Bane Dunn and Remoa, and he allows you to the use of his royal chambers. Once you are alone, you use your kind master to attempt to make contact with Guildmaster Bane Dunn telepathically. You concentrate with all of your power, straining your psychic energies in the effort to contact with your friend's mind. To your surprise, you detect a barrier in the ethereal plane, a wall of dark energy that has been placed there purposely to prevent telepathic contact. You sense that the barrier is the work of the Dark God Nor, and you call on all your reserves of psychic strength in an effort to break through it. And you will now roll with dice, and to it you will add... Give me a moment. Uh, something to do with your rank. Grand Guardian. And add four. Oh, wait. Yes, four. Oh, eight then. 